Hello, in this video, we're going to see how to set the user and group for a running container using pod security context. The prerequisites for this video are that you should be knowing about deployments and volumes. Let's look at a manifest that we are going to use to create a deployment as follows. So this is going to be a basic node app image that we are going to pull from Docker Hub. And we're also using an empty directory volume that will be mounted onto the container in this path slash temp slash ed. Let's go ahead and create this deployment. Let's see if the pods are running. All right, so the pod is now running. Let's get into the bash prompt of this part of this application. We can check the current user using who am I command, but we also know it's root from the, from the prompt here. It says rooted, which means that the user is now root. This means that the default user for this container is root. Different container images can come with different default uses, but for this container, for this image, the basic node app, the default user is going to be root. So all the running processes will be run as root, and any files that we will create will also be created and owned by root. And this user belongs to this group ID root, as well as it doesn't have any extra supplementary groups as shown by groups. So the group ID and the user ID for the root user is gonna be zero. So if we create any new file, let's say in the temp directory, this file will be owned by root and the group root. Let's see the long listing format. So it means that the file one is going to be owned by the user root and also by the group root. And we also have a different directory called this ed, which we created, which is mounted as part of the empty directory volume. And this is also being maintained by the same root user and root group. We can also try creating something inside that directory. And that is gonna get the same permissions like the other file. So this is also owned by the root user and the root group. So this is all fine. So the only problem that we have got here is that we are now logged in as root user and this gives us a chance to actually interact with any sensitive files in the system, such as that owned by the ETC directory and so on. Let's see the ETC directory, which contains the configuration of the system. If at all you wanted to change something here, let's say you wanted to create a new file here. You should be able to do it because you're root. And if you wanted to take some file out here, you can, let's try to remove the same file. So that's also working. So it means that you have, you pretty much have access to anything in your system because you are logged in as root and this is not much secure. Let's exit out of this container. And now let's get into the deployment manifest and we are gonna slightly modify it by introducing a new section under the pod spec, which is called as security context. And that's the topic for this video. So we are gonna add a section called as a run as user, and we are gonna give it some user ID, let's say 11,000. So we are going to run the container as user 11,000 and not root. Likewise, we can also give the run as group option, which means that the default group, the running group inside the container is going to be whatever ID we give, let's say 22,000. So the user and group information are now set. There is also an optional parameter that can be handy. We're gonna put that here, which is FS group, which is like an add-on group to the user, an additional supplementary group 
to the user 11,000. So we can also give an ID for this. So let's say 33,000. So the user is set, group is set, and the supplementary group is also set. We are good with the configuration. We are gonna save it and quit. Let's delete the existing deployment. And let's go ahead and create a new deployment with the new configuration. Let's see if the pod is running. It's running. So we are gonna get into the bash prompt of the new container. And like before, you, we are gonna say, who am I? We know it's going to be no answer, no response for this because we did not set the name for this. We just set a random user ID and this user is not part of the ETC password file or anything like that. And if you give the ID option, you will see the user ID, group ID, and also groups section. And we see one extra value here. We didn't see this when we tried it for the root user, but for this user, we are seeing an extra group ID, which is nothing but the supplementary group ID that was supplied with the FS group option. Okay. And if you create any file like we did before, so let's say touch slash TMP slash file one. And if we look into this directory and give the long listing format, we see that file one is going to be owned by 11,000, the user and 22,000, the group, because this is the group ID we gave in the runners group section. Whereas we know that there is a directory existing, the ED directory, and if we want to create something inside the ED directory, so I'm gonna say file one, and if you look at the permissions of this, we see that the user ID is still 11,000. That's expected, but the group is different. The group is not 22,000, it's 33,000, because whatever you're gonna create inside the volume is gonna take the group permission from the FS group value. So whatever you supply there is gonna come here. So that's only for the FS group option is specifically for anything within the volume that is mounted in the container. So that's the only difference between FS group and the other group that we gave. For rest of the files, it's going to be that group. For files within this volume, it's going to be the secondary group that we gave as FS group. And it will be not just for files, it can also be for any directories under this parent directory. If you look at the permission of this ED directory itself, you see that this is still owned by root because this is the default user. So the permission for the directory itself in terms of the user is not changed. It comes from the default user. The container was kind of packaged. The container image was packaged, but the group matters. The group is going to be the same for the directory and for anything inside the directory. And the user is going to be the default user for that directory, for the parent directory ED, and for anything inside the directory, it's going to be this user ID, which we gave as runners group. So that's how we can actually use the security context feature of pod. And we can change the running user group, as well as the group ownership for the shared volume. That's about this video. Hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.